great. So we are uh, we are at our last class, kind of sad. Um, uh, we've kind of gotten used to doing this on Monday nights. It's a nice kind of calming way to start our week. Um, so I guess we'll see what Nikhil has in store for us today. So Nikhil, welcome one more time. Thank you, Melissa. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, great. Yes, I agree with you, Melissa. I see lots of familiar faces here. So how about we start today with something I, uh, I'd like for you all to do. Um, take your right hand, bring it forward like this. Now take it up. Now turn your palm so it faces back. Now bend your elbow, place your hand on your shoulder and give yourselves a pat. You did a great job. <laughs> you thought I was going somewhere with it, right? <laughs> I did. I did until I got there. And then Good like, one. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. I fell for it. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Wow, I'm, I'm happy to see lots of smiling faces today, lots of happy faces. I think spring has finally arrived. Yay. Yay. Good, 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 good. All right, so today's session is the power of self-connection. Honestly, I feel this is the easiest one for me because everybody understands the value of self-connection. So, I don't have to spend time on establishing why it's important, right? Right. So we can directly go into talking about what stands in our way or what stands in your way. You're here to learn about the power of self-connection, maybe find some tools and ways to find that self-connection or deepen that self-connection, right? Um, that's, that's why we're here, right? So let's start by talking about what gets into our way. What gets into your way? You can either unmute and talk or you can write in the chat. What do you think gets in your way? I get in my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, Melody. I was just gonna say my own limiting beliefs sometimes get in my way. Yeah, don't we all? <laughs> and sometimes it's just uh, taking the time um, just to focus. I mean, sometimes I'm just so busy, I'm not really paying attention to myself and what I'm feeling. Yes, yes. How often do we find ourselves that think the list that we have to get to the to-do list is so long um, and we do not have time to even service ourselves properly. Show of hands for those who are on video. Yeah. Imagine you were going on a really long road trip, like uh, wherever you're at to the opposite corner of the country, at least a thousand miles maybe. And you were like, because I have to go for so long, I'm not going to stop and refuel my car. How <laughs> silly would that be? Oh, you have a breakdown. <laughs> you want to get there. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get there, right? How often do we do that to ourselves, though? Much. <laughs> Probably more times than we do. Consistently. <laughs> Consistently, right? Even though it sounds so silly, right? Why would you not stop for refueling if you have to take a long drive? Isn't it? And yet we do that so often to ourselves. Why? Why do you think that happens? I think we're busy. We're busy. I think what I think happens is we take our well-being, our mental wellness for granted. Because the effects of running out of fuel in your car are very obvious. Mm -hmm. But 
running out of fuel in your mind, in your very, in your body, not that obvious, <laughs> at least not in the short term. But for those of us who've been doing it consistently over and over, running on low battery, running on low fuel, what happens after a certain amount of time? Burnout. Burnout, right? Fatigue sets in, disinterest in life, disinterest in other things. Illness. Right? Illness, yes, yes. You know, in one of the sessions, we talked about the seven levels of our inner environment, right? The body gets sick, the breath gets too shallow. We stop using our lungs fully and properly. Mind gets too scattered. Lots of thoughts, often random and disconnected. <laughs> our ability to take decisions gets inhibited or at least get ability to take the right decisions, good decisions gets inhibited, right? Our memory starts clinging to the negative. This is often the sign that we have ignored ourselves for too long. When you start noticing that most often the thoughts of the past are about something negative. Now, if we really look back at our life from when we were born to where we are at today, would you say that everything about us has been miserable? No, right? Not everything has been bad, right? Maybe 20% situations were a little difficult to navigate, but for the most part about 75 to 80% has been pretty good, right? But oftentimes, what do we find ourselves thinking? Oh, I am the chosen one. You know, God has been specifically kind to me. And then we go on social media, we look at someone's Facebook post and they are vacationing in Hawaii. And we're like, oh my God, look at them. They look so happy. And I am the, the most miserable person. Then you're like, okay, let me shut off Facebook. Let me go on LinkedIn. At least there's, you know, better content there. And then you see this person, he's been promoted to senior vice president in his company. And you used to you know, go to college with them and you're like, you know, I used to get much better grades than this guy. How come he has become the senior VP and I'm, you know, I'm still uh, well, I mean, I'm still well behind that career level. And they were like, you know what? My life has just been like this. One after another, things have happened. Now, back in 1994, this happened to me. And then in 1998, this happened to me. And before we know, we get into the spiral of continuously remembering the negative events in life. If you've ever reached that stage, that means you've ignored your well being for well too long. If for some of us, we've probably gone even a step further where we have found ourselves either thinking that, you know what, I'm just not good. I'm just not good enough. Or we found ourselves thinking, you know what, I'm actually much better than everyone else. It's just that life has been unkind to me. Happened to anybody ever? Those thoughts came? Yeah, yeah. When all of this happens, what do we lose? The first thing that we lose, it's an obvious thing, a smile on our face, right? What's the second thing we lose? A peace of mind, right? And what's the third thing we lose? our connection with ourself. So now how do we find that connection again? The answer is simple. Go back to the basics, right? In all the three sessions before this, I've been talking about it, that all the talk 
is just to make us aware that attending to our mind through our breath is the most essential thing for all of us to do. Or in whichever way you can, you know, bring about some control over our mind. I always say our mind can be our biggest asset or it can be our biggest enemy. Just depends on how we use it or how we treat it. Right? Now the mind has a mind of its own. It's not going to just listen to us. And that's why breathing is so critical because mind has no option but to listen to the breath. Maybe I've talked about this. There was a study done at Harvard a few years ago where they found that every emotion had a corresponding rhythm in the breath. So, and then they did a reverse study. They made people breathe in certain rhythms and they found that certain emotions or certain change in their state of mind could be achieved by just changing the pattern of the breath. So if you've ever sat down and felt lonely or if you've ever felt bored, especially during the lockdown, if you've been uh, alone at home, stuck, not able to meet other people, and you felt bored, anybody felt bored sitting around at home? If you were feeling bored with yourself, imagine how boring you must be for other people. Yeah, for me, I think like this whole uh, being at home has been an opportunity to really look at life from a different perspective, to find out what's important for me, what's working for me, what's not working for me, what's conducive for my overall well-being. I've been recent. I've recently started this series um, called. Um, Become wealthy, right? What? Become yeah. wealthy. Wealthy. Okay, I'm gonna write it down. Yeah, because I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not getting it. Oh, because it's not a regular word. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Yes, you know it's said that uh, we spend half our uh, half our health trying to gain the wealth and then we get old and then we spend all our wealth ready to regain the health which never comes back. <laughs> so wherever we are at in life, yes, it's important to succeed. It's important to do everything in the outside world how about we do it from a calm, centered, positive state of mind? That is conducive for our success. That is conducive for our productivity. That is conducive for our self-connection. In fact, when we have that state of self-connection, we cannot but be successful. Did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, it's only that's different layers and layers of stress that we accumulate over our whole lifetime that prevents us from getting in touch with that very own self. That's always there. You know, the good news is the self is always there. It's just waiting for us to get in touch with it. Unfortunately, self does not have outgoing service on its cellular network. It can only take incoming calls. <laughs> so we have to just dial the right number and we can get there. Now, how do we dial that number? The answer is simple. Find something, whatever it is for you that allows you to have a calm state of mind. For a lot of people, meditation is a good way to find that calm state of mind, to cut through those layers of stress. 
you know, what happens is we, we, we're born and we go to school. We learn things at home and we learn things at school. We develop so many skills and yet nobody ever teaches us how to deal with our own mind and our own emotions. Isn't that something people should learn in primary school? <laughs> we spend so much time and money going to school, going to college, hundreds and thousands of dollars to get to become something, to get some degree. And yet, if we don't know how to manage our mind, how to be in touch with ourselves, what good is that education? What's going to come out of it? How long can we sustain that life without self-connection? Not too long. Someone who is very dear to me uh, in my family, I would always tell them that uh, they, need to find, they need to find a way to slow down and take care of their state of mind. They never listen to me, you know how some people in your family are like that. They love you so much, yet they'll never listen to you. A lot of women would find that quality in their husbands. <laughs> yeah, so, so I would keep telling that and they would never listen to me and uh, and uh, sure enough, after you know they finished college, they got a great job, uh, worked their ass off for several years, um, 15, 18 hours a day on an average, not caring about food, not caring about sleep, not caring about getting enough rest or breaks or weekends, whatever. But they rose really well in their career, eventually coming to a point that their body started breaking down at the age of 32. This person had to leave an amazingly successful career at Google where uh, they were the head of their partnership um, for, cloud, for their cloud business with uh, all other companies to retire and not be able to work anymore at 32. Now that's a big bit of an extreme example. Uh, but to some degree, we are all culprits of doing that. Okay. Yeah. So today we're going to learn a very useful breathing technique and this is actually one of the simplest breathing techniques you'll learn in this series. Uh, yet something that is so profound in helping us find that connect with our inner self. Right after the breathing, we're going to go into the meditation. So before we do that, any questions about what we've talked so far or any aspect of it that you would like to dive further in, dive deeper in? Nothing? Okay, good. When we come back from meditation, we're gonna talk a little bit more about um, another topic that didn't quite fit into the series, but I did wanna uh, address it here anyway. Since you guys have returned, uh, I thought you guys get that as a bonus. Okay, so the breathing we're going to learn is, uh, Craig says, can you please do a recap of the breathing techniques we learned and what they are best for? Sure, Craig, I'll get to it after the meditation. Is that okay? Yeah, good. All right, so the one we're going to do today is called the ocean breath. Did I do the ocean breath? earlier? No, I didn't, right? Yes, the ocean breath. So why we call it the ocean breath? 
because it literally sounds like the waves in the ocean. <laughs> so the way we do this is, um, okay, let's do this thing. Let's take our hands out again, um, facing towards the screen. This time I'm not gonna ask you to pat on your back. So now turn it around facing your face. I imagine this is a mirror and you're fogging the mirror. How do we fog the mirror? <sighs> right, we do this. We make this sound and we breathe onto the mirror, <sighs> right? Let's all make this sound. The hand is not so important, the sound is. <sighs> Can you hear that sound? Not from me, from yourself. <sighs> yeah, okay. Now, when you're making that sound, notice that there is a certain muscle in your throat that you're tightening to make that sound. Notice that muscle. You can do this without the hand if you like. Notice that muscle that you're tightening in your throat to make that sound. Now, it's important we get that because now what we're going to do we're going to close the mouth and still breathe out through the nose with that same muscle tightened. You get it? You still get maybe a little less of a sound than before, but you hear a certain sound when you're breathing out. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is while breathing in, also through the nose, we're going to keep that same muscle constricted. I do it both with inhale and exhale. That muscle in the throat is tightened, constricted, and we're breathing through the nose, in and out. Notice that sound that's coming with the breath. It's not like the usual breath that we take. It's like, imagine you have a hose running through your throat and now you're tightening the hose a little. Now while doing this, Make the breath long and deep and slow and steady. Now, do you know why we call it the ocean breath? Okay, if you're still a little unsure, take your hands, bring your hands forward. This time we're not fogging the mirror, so let's do it. They're actually going to be using the hands and we're gonna place them on our ears, not tightly, just lightly. So you can still hear me. And now let's do that breath, the ocean breath. and relax. Now, did, were you able to hear the waves of the ocean? Yeah. I also like to call it the Darth Vader breath. <laughs> okay, I see some people get the Star Wars connection. <laughs> Great one. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally the most simple breathing exercise there can be. All we're doing is switching our breathing from normal to just using a small, slight constriction in the throat and breathing with that. Yeah. 
Let's close our eyes and see what it does for us. Sit back, relax, close the eyes. Let's start with just regular, normal, deep breaths in and out. While doing that, just observe your state of mind. Notice how you're feeling. Notice how present you are in the moment. And now let's bring that slight constriction in the throat muscle and start doing the ocean breath. and let the breath come back to normal. Once again, notice your state of mind. Notice how you're feeling and how present are you. And slowly, gradually, we can open our eyes. Would anyone like to share how it was doing the ocean breath and what it did for you? I had such nice like image in my head. I felt kind of at peace. I even had a little bit of tears coming out. So this was a, a good release, I guess. Yeah, good. Thank you for sharing, Marilyn. You're welcome. You have a nice background. It's like your head has sun all around it. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's my uh, for a non business meeting. This is my tapestry. <laughs> oh, if I had that, I would use it even for my business meetings. Ah, uh, well, it can it can <laughs> clash with what I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I have I actually have another one. Um, it's an elephant with like blue waves. Mm hmm. So it's just a um, like a little sheet or something from Amazon that I just hang on my wall. So it takes no yeah. no space at all, <laughs> and it's very mm -hmm. like peaceful. It's good. Yeah, it is good. Any other thoughts? And how was the ocean breath for you? I found it very relaxing. It might be that particular breath, or maybe it's just because we've been doing for weeks but it didn't take me very long to sort of <laughs> get lost in that space where I'm not consciously aware of what's going on um, yeah. yeah yeah Pamela says I imagine standing in front of ocean peaceful yes can do that anyone else any thoughts on how it was for you 
cl close to snoring when you're sleeping. Yes, good. I was just about to get to that. This is almost like your breath right before you're going into a deep sleep. Now you may probably not know that you've been breathing this way all along, all through your life. Ask your partner, they would tell you. <laughs> yes. So this is a very natural mechanism already inbuilt in our bodies to take us into that state to, to start transitioning from outside world to the inside world when we're shutting down from the outside world at night otherwise you cannot sleep right if your mind is so stuck in the outside world would you get sleep for a lot of people that is why they're not able to sleep because the mind is so hooked on to the outside world it refuses to quieten down so the sleep never happens so the secret is to use the ocean breath. Now do this as a homework tonight. When you're in bed, you've done everything you wanted to do today. You've shut off the lights. You've said good night to everybody. Your phone is now plugged in for charging overnight. And you have nothing more left to do. Take your right hand or whichever hand is your primary hand Put that on the belly and take up to 10 long deep ocean breaths. Now, if you fall asleep before you get to 10, that's fine. But if you get to 10 and you're not yet asleep, do not continue. This is important. Do not continue beyond 10. Otherwise, you'll find my phone number in the email that Melissa sent. You'll call me in the morning really upset saying that I could not sleep all night because of you. <laughs> so if you get to 10, do not continue further. Okay. Do this as an exercise. I tell you your quality of sleep will go off the roof. I wish I had that actually. Um, uh, I, ha I taught this to somebody and uh, they were in the habit of tracking their sleep through their Fitbit. So they sent me an image of their, like from the day they started doing this, they sent me an image of how their REM sleep and deep sleep has increased like about 15, 20% from where it was before. So this is data driven. <laughs> so try it for yourself. And even generally, at any time, if you're feeling like you want to find that self-connection, wherever you are, this is not something you cannot do in front of other people, you know. You can do this in a flight, you can do this in a class, you can do this in a work meeting, you can do this in the gym, you can do, you can absolutely do this in when you're doing yoga. If any of you have a yoga practice or you do yoga, combine this breathing with your yoga and see the impact. It's phenomenal. <laughs> All right. Breathing in and out of nose, 10X or ocean breath? Yes, so ocean breath is breathing in and out through the nose. So do the ocean breath up to 10 times, not more than that. If you fall asleep before 10, it's okay. I have actually never been able to get to 10 on this one. So I am probably on the other end of the spectrum. I can fall asleep standing up if I wanted. <laughs> I hate you now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the problem is that I can also fall asleep in classes very easily if I'm getting a little bored. <laughs> <laughs> or work meetings, which is even scarier. Um, Mar Marilyn is asking, are there other names this is known as? Uh, there is another name for it in Sanskrit. It, can, it is called the Ujjayi breath. 
Oh, okay. I just I just saw that in my quick research. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that's what it was. Yeah, it's also called the Ujjayi breath. For those I of you who the yoga class and we use Ujjayi breath throughout the entire yoga class, it made a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. How do you spell that, Nikhil? Ujjayi is U J J A Y I. Yep, Marilyn's got it. Actually, it's Marlene. Sorry. Marlene, yes. Thanks, Marlene. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Yes, so. They said it's also known as Victorious Breath. I like that. So victory is just the translation for Ujjayi. Ah, okay. Victory is the English word for Ujjayi. I like to call it the Darth Vader breath. That's a name I came up with. So <laughs> I'm going to stick to that name, but you can call it whatever you want. You have the I'll honor. remember it if I think of it with that name, because that, yeah. that sound. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Ali, is that your cat? Oh my God, so cute. <laughs> this is Quincy. He always joins me on Zoom. Oh, nice. Oh, wow, his stripes are so cool. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's beautiful. Wow. Oh. <laughs> They're not stripes. There's no scar. All right. At this point, we are getting into the chit chat mode, which I would like to avoid till later. <laughs> Ready for a meditation? Yeah. Okay. Let's close our eyes, sit back, relax in an easy, comfortable posture. If sitting is difficult for you for 15, 20 minutes, you can lay down if you prefer. If any of your electronic gadgets can potentially distract you during the meditation, you know what to do with that. Sit back, relax, take it easy. When you hear me saying something, just imagine you're listening to music. So you're not analyzing the words. You're not taking it as instructions. You're just letting the words flow through you like music. Even if I don't sound very melodious, the words are selected to have an impact on our state of mind. Putting in any extra effort will only distract you from the experience. With the eyes closed and a gentle smile on the face, let's do a few rounds of the Darth Vader breath, the ocean breath, the Ujjayi breath, the victorious breath, whatever you want to call it. Up to 10 rounds of ocean breath.
continuing with the ocean breath. If you wish, you can do a couple of neck rolls, a couple of shoulder rolls, just to loosen up a little. And we are ready to dive into our meditation. Let the breath come back to normal. But don't let go of that, that smile. Incoming breath energizes the body. And the outgoing breath brings relaxation. With the breath in, the body is getting energized. With each breath out, the body is relaxing more and more. Observe the natural rhythm of the breath. Without trying to make the breath deeper or longer. Observe your natural normal rhythm of the breath right now. Without any effort, bring your awareness to the base of the spine.
few inches above the anal sphincter muscles. With the next exhale, we'll make the sound of a hummingbird. Mm -hmm. You can do this internally or out loud, however you prefer. Breathe in. Mm -hmm. Without much effort, become aware of a point in the lower abdomen behind the genitals. Once again, we'll breathe in and make the hum sound, breathing out. Breathe in. If the mind wanders off, it's okay. When you become aware, come back to that point in the abdomen behind the genitals. Now let's move up to the navel region. The area around the navel. Breathe in for the hum sound. Mm.
moving up to the heart region. Bringing our attention to our heart and breathing in for the hum sound. Moving up to the throat. Breathe in for him. Breathing normally. And gently moving the awareness further up to a point in the middle of the eyebrows, the third eye. Right in the center of the eyebrows, on the forehead. Breathe in for the hum.
gradually moving up to a point on the top of the head, the crown of the head. Internally making the sound hmm. Take a long deep breath in and breathe out. Bring the awareness to the breath flowing in and out of the body. Returning to the ocean breath for four to five breaths. and allow the breath to come back to normal. And with the next breath, we may roll our shoulders, roll our neck. You can stretch your hands if you'd like. And when we feel ready, Slowly, gradually, 
taking her own time, can open their eyes. Some of you may know what we just did. If you've been in the tradition of yoga, you would have probably heard about the concept of energy centers. So we just went through all our energy centers and used a sound to create some vibrations in there. If you don't know about it, don't worry about it. Just focus on how you're feeling right now. Good. Oh, wow, we are over time already. Didn't realize. Mm. Well, I could. If anybody would like to share their experience of the breathing and meditation, we can take a couple of people. Melissa, do we have, can we go over by three, four minutes? We certainly can, if you're willing to stay. Yeah. I'd like to hear from you a few. I think that it was really interesting because I felt very much in my body, if, if that explanation makes sense. Like instead of focusing so much on the external world, like I really felt connected to my body and in my body. Good, good. Any other thoughts? I've noticed that the, the meditation time goes by so quickly. I don't even realize how, how much time has gone by because I'm so relaxed during it. Yeah, that can happen. The first time I went to a silent meditation retreat, it was a four day retreat where we were promised we were going to get like morning till night, long, hour long meditations. And I was like, I can't even sit still for two minutes. What are you talking about? <laughs> and just like you said, time just goes by when we are in meditation. It just so happens. <laughs> hmm. Any other thoughts about today's meditation and breathing? I think that was my favorite breath. I like that. <laughs> yeah. The easiest one. So we can quickly recap on the one that we have covered so far. Craig, are you still there? I know you asked that question. Yes, I see Craig is still here. Okay. Okay. So the first one we learned, I may get the order wrong because I don't really recollect in what order we had done this. Um, I think the first one we learned was the bellows breathing. Remember the hands in this starting position and then it, you throw the arms up with the normal breath, fists open, Janet, fists open when we throw the arms up and then when we bring them back down, the fists close again. So that is, we do 15 to 20 such breaths in one round. And typically you can go do up to three rounds at a time. Between each round, you can give yourself a break of about 10 seconds or so. This will just like fill you up with instant energy. It's like the espresso shot of life force. So this is something that you can utilize if you're feeling a little dull, but you really have to, you know, find that sense of excitement, then uh, this can really help. Yeah. The other one that we learned was the alternate nostril breathing. Uh, the index finger and the middle finger come at the center of the eyebrows. We use the thumb to block the right nostril. We use the ring finger and the pinky to block the left nostril. 
and we alternate our breath from left to right nostril, breathing in from one, switch, breathe out from the other, breathe in from the same, switch, breathe out from the other. So you're switching before the exhalation. And this is to find a sense of balance. If your mind is feeling too scattered and you need to find a sense of focus, this can really help. Sense of balance. Yeah. Um, and then what else did we learn? We learned the, the hmm breath, which we also use today in the meditation, right? So what we do, we take the index fingers, gently plug the ears, and then we, on the exhale, we make the sound. This is if your mind is just absolutely not listening to you. So found yourself in that situation, especially if something uh, unexpected has happened or, uh, or if there's some trauma associated with something, then this can really help with that. I'm forgetting what was the other one we did. I know in one of the sessions we did two. This is like the straw breath. The straw breath. breath. Yes, the straw breath. So the straw breath is literally exactly like how it's defined, the straw. Imagine you have a straw and you're breathing in and out through that straw. This can calm the nerves. If you're feeling anxious about something or some fear is coming in or uh, any anxiety, nervousness can really help with that. And then today we did the ocean breath. Ocean breath is to find that sense of connection with ourselves, with our inner self. You're fine. If you ever find yourself too stuck in the outer world and you just want to find that inner corner of peace within, just a few minutes of the ocean breath can take us there. Right. I know I promised uh, some bonus content, which we have no time left for. So maybe Melissa will schedule another series at some point and we'll cover that at a later time. Well, I had the absolute pleasure of spending the last four Mondays with the, all of you. Um, any words that you may have for the series, for those of you who attended all sessions or part or partly, uh, maybe a couple of you can share. How has it been for you being on this journey, especially if you've done all four sessions? I would love to hear that. I was just gonna say it was really nice. Um, it's like a scheduled time to relax. So, so I know that most of us don't get that. So <laughs> it was like forced relaxing. So I appreciate forced that. Relaxing. I like that. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Um, uh, the breathing, since it can be done at any time, I've been using it all week, especially the straw breath. That's been really good to calm my nerves. And um, I've really enjoyed that. So thank you very much. This has been really useful for me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Betsy. Yes, keep using these breathing techniques. They're so simple to use and yet so profound. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Melissa, there's few people writing in the chat. Yes, I see. Basically, they're saying this has been wonderful. Thank you for sharing your gift with us. I've been using this for many reasons. You know, I think, especially we, we, we're we recognizing each other's faces. I think most of us that are here today have been here the whole, um, the whole time. So Nikhil, really, thank you so much. I, I think clearly we've all really gotten a lot out of this um, and something that we can continue to use and um, I imagine some of us will continue to explore uh, further. So um, I will be reaching out to everybody um, after the session, uh, this last session to get your feedback. 
um, and maybe sharing some more information about um, some of the programs that Nikhil does. Um, but I'm, I'm glad you could all join us and, and we will continue to do more of these types of programs as well as other things. Uh, clearly move, moving to a Zoom world has, um, has given us some new options for keeping connected with uh, the UAlbany community. So I'm glad you could all be here. And again, thank you to Nikhil. Thank you to uh, all of you for making it a success. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank thank you, you Melissa. Thank you. My pleasure. And as I've always said, this is just scratching the surface. There is so much more to learn. I'm still learning, but I have collected a few pieces of wisdom and a few different amazing techniques along the way that I'd love to share with you all. So find a workshop where I'm teaching them. I'd love to have you on my program. It's called the Sky Breath Meditation Workshop. And it, I tell you, you have not even experienced 0.5% of where your breath and meditation can take you. So use this as an initiation into this path and then go forward. <laughs>